I'm a very proud doctor. I don't know how you feel wearing this white coat, but I am an extremely proud doctor. And therefore, it makes my blood boil when people say all doctors are thugs. It makes my blood absolutely boil. I came into medicine because my father was a doctor. He tried his best to make sure I didn't become a doctor. He kept saying, you're so smart, why should you be a doctor? And today, unfortunately, there are times when I look back at my father's memory and think maybe there was an easier way to make a living. Because when you wake up, at, when people turn around and say, and I've heard lots of leaders in society also say this, Tum doctors to paise ke piche bhaagte rehte ho. And I'm like, or aap? Aap kis ke piche bhaagte hain? Main to usi samaj se aaya hu, jis samaj ne aapko paida kiya. Aap ki ye upeksha mut se kyu hai? Why do you have these expectations from me? I didn't want to be God. I don't want to be God, I don't want to be dog. I just want to be another human being. I just want you to respect me for what I do, just the way I respect you. And trust me, nothing can be more difficult than saving the life of another human being. Nothing at all. There are times when people who are in management say, today was a very bad day. My boss yelled at me. You know what's a bad day for us? Someone has died. Are you trying to tell me that I'm happy because someone has died? Even painters are extremely proud of the painting they create. And if doctors and surgeons were amongst the best that society had academically when they went into their respective fields, are you saying I'm happy that the patient died and I'm counting the notes? If that is the case, then should society be asking itself what have we degenerated into? Because if our best cannot be trusted, then what does it say about society in general? I sometimes get really upset that airfares are going up. Does this mean I should beat up the pilot? Because unfortunately the pilot has no role in this. And sometimes the doctor has no role in this. Costs in healthcare, even in cosmetic surgery, which is a specialty I practice, costs in healthcare in India are one-tenth that of Thailand. I'm not even talking of the US, I'm talking of Thailand. And probably with three times the competence and the level of English, etc. that we speak. If Indians cannot afford our services, the fault is not ours, the fault has to be someone else's. If medical seats today are more expensive than probably palatial bungalows in other countries, the fault is not ours, I didn't design the system. If there are so many other reasons why the best academically are not getting into medicine, sorry, the fault is not mine. I didn't choose the system. And so why should I bear the cudgels of something that I didn't choose, something I didn't create, something that you didn't ask me before creating, but yet I must bear the cross for that, why? Why? Why should I bear that? I remember one year ago, I was operating. On one day, we had one HIV-positive patient, one hepatitis B patient, and one patient who was into full-blown AIDS. By the end of the surgeries, the entire operating room, because we were performing some very complex facial procedures, was covered in blood. We were all bathed in blood. How much can double gloves and a space suit-like thing protect you? Are you telling me I'm trying, I love money so much that I want to die of HIV? And if that is true, then why don't you go ahead or whoever is not a doctor come in and try and make sure how funny it is to make money and be woken up at 3 a.m. and go and see a patient when your child and your wife are next to you and they want you to go to sleep. Why is it that doctors in India have a 30% greater suicide rate than other communities? Why is it that doctors live approximately 9 years less according to the Indian Medical Association data than the average life expectancy of Indians. Why is it that Indians who had an average life expectancy of 32 years at independence today live up to 69 years, which is double and more, and yet no one seems to recognize what we are doing as a speciality or as, as people? Is it that we are doing bad work? Or is it that we are bad at communication? Or is it that, my dear friends, 
we are bad mouthing each other so much that the patient has no ability but to agree so the next time that you become a doctor please think about one thing if you will take shortcuts and if you will run down your own community there will come a time when people will come after you that time don't stand up and say no one stood for me so it's very very important to understand some of these issues which are happening stick together as a community and do amazing work so when aparna and i started discussing this 3 years ago and thank god i met someone who's actually prouder to be a doctor than even i am and when we started thinking of this we started realizing that media was just highlighting the negatives media was just highlighting the fact that there are so many people dying and there are hospitals being vandalized but tell me science has progressed to the level where you can cure diseases in utero science has progressed to the level where you can do genetic modifications people are living longer lives in india than ever before and if it was only the traditional mechanisms of medicine which were doing that those were there even before independence what changed so therefore we decided that sometimes when there is a lot of oil there's no point in trying to remove the oil because you remove the oil someone put some more oil and then it keeps floating on the water so we said let's talk about positivity let's start a movement let's go ahead and talk about the positive things that doctors do we are positive people and maybe because this is the way we are we meet all sorts of positive people so we said let's hand pick doctors from across the country so all of these writers and i must thank dr nitin kadam and dr kalyani sen for being a part of this book they were hand picked all across imagine if someone had told you 15 20 years earlier that the mgm institute would become so huge would you believe it it's a deemed university imagine what sort of thought processes someone must have had to create something so amazing but everyone wants to pick up negatives right that's what goes ahead and gives us brownie points there are negatives in each one of us even the ones who are pointing fingers at us so therefore we sat about and said we are going to pick up these guys who are superstars and as we collected the stories and as we put them together most of the stories gave me goose pimples most of the stories made me want to cry because these were amazing stories these were just amazing stories of resilience when you have dr olit selvan talking about how he had to brave the riots there were riots going on in karnataka and tamil nadu and while he was taking the patient across for a liver transplant from one state to the other there were kaveri riots how he had to brave riots which were burning ambulances oh by the way what does that say about society they were burning ambulances and then he walked across the border with his patient hand in hand after telling his wife that he didn't know whether he would come back that evening how is that lesser than any soldier in this country how is that lesser and today it's so cool to talk about patriotism and talk about soldiers but hello the way things are going 40% super speciality seats were not occupied this year if things continue in this manner i'm sorry to say even soldiers will find it difficult to lead us in battle because they'll bleed to death without the doctors so that's how we put things together and that then we went to bloomsbury and we said okay let's put it all together they agreed this will come out with a step 2 of the book step 2 will become larger we've already started planning it there will be some nobel laureates will be a part of this the person who invented did the first face transplant in the world the person who invented the cyber knife in the world amazing things amazing stories because ultimately my friends it's about us having to get inspired as well if we keep reading negative stuff and i know a lot of doctors who now when we get together talk of all the negatives we are reinforcing the negatives and not igniting the positives we didn't come into medicine to talk of negative stuff we came into medicine to save lives and so let's do whatever we are doing well and communicate a little bit better so that people can start and understand why as doctors we were privileged to be blessed with the art of healing and understand that no matter how much science progresses ultimately we may try our best but there has to be a superior power who's responsible for everyone because without that my father too would have been alive today if only doctors could have done everything 
My father would not have passed away in 2011. Like I said, there's been a lack of trust. It's become deep-seated. And unfortunately, we've got the feeling over the last few years that India is almost at war with its doctors. In the US, there are litigations, and in India, there are hospitals being broken down. And therefore, we wanted to change the thought process, and that's what we wanted to do and become the medium, and this book is one of them. And we are very privileged and lucky to say that there's been a lot of love showered on this book. In the first 20 days itself, the book has gone into its first reprint. In the first pre-launch itself, it pre-launched on Amazon.India on the 10th of August. By the 20th, Amazon had run out. But there are only 2,500 copies yet, and we have a long way to go. Not a long way because we want to earn royalties, but a long way because we need to ignite the conversation and tell people why we are so proud and so privileged to be wearing that white coat Keeping it clean is a responsibility, and if people are going to throw mud at it, we must use some more whiteners and tell them about the wonderful things that our profession is doing. Thank you so much.